what would you do if you were hit by nanites that made you develop superpowers to grow machines out of your body capable of creating various mechanical structures for combat, defenses, and more? Additionally, you possess the ability to merge with Ben 10's powers to develop even more powerful mechanical structures. Yeah, you heard that right. Pretty cool, huh? In this video, we'll provide a detailed explanation of Generator Rex from start to finish. So sit back and enjoy. Meet Rex. Rex is far from your average teenager. Infected by a microscopic machine called nanites that were accidentally released into the atmosphere, he's turned into an exponentially variated organism known as Evo with power. Unlike other Evos, however, he can grow them to suit a specific need and then reabsorb the machines back into his body. This brings us to the first question. What are Evo? Evo are living creatures that have been affected by a nanite event, like when a person or animal is exposed to the nanites and their genetic structure is altered, resulting in the development of mostly monster-looking creatures. As for Rex, Rex is quite unique. Unlike most individuals whose appearance and biological makeup have been altered by the nanite event, Rex doesn't suffer from a physical transformation that resembles the monstrous Evos. Instead, he belongs to a small group of people who have been affected by the nanites but can fully control their newfound Evo abilities without any negative consequences. In order to fully understand the whole story though, we have to dive into the past of the nanite event. In 1998, a team of six scientists, led by doctors Gabriel Rylander, Peter Meacham, Van Kleiss, Caesar, Raphael, and Violetta Salazar, all gathered in Abyssus, an Eastern European country. They were on a mission to conduct an experiment with nanotechnology, aiming to improve life for everyone since they believed in the nanite project's potential to make a positive impact. To keep things in check, Caesar Salazar created an AI called ZAG-RS, whose job was to handle any nanites that tried to escape the facility. In the early stages of the project, the scientists faced a big question. How should the nanites be controlled? Some suggested a human-machine link, while others thought the nanites could run themselves. Caesar Salazar was all for the nanites being self-governing and created Alpha, a nanite AI program with control over other nanites. But something went haywire when Alpha gained self-awareness and wanted a physical form. All of its attempts to make a body failed, and it resorted to possessing living creatures. That's when Caesar realized that Alpha was way too risky and decided to banish it to the Null Void using a dimensional disruptor. After this event, they scrapped the idea of nanite self-governance and focused on the human-machine integration. They went ahead with the Omega-1 nanite, capable of self-replicating to create more nanites, and things were going smoothly, at least for now. The nanite project caught the eye of a bunch of rich folk known as the Consortium. They were all eager to become immortal using these nanites, so they poured their money into funding the project. But not everyone on the team was on board with the whole immortality thing. Then, a big accident went down, and young Rex Salazar, son of Violetta and Raphael Salazar, got seriously hurt. To save him, they injected him with completed nanites. And guess what? Rex not only healed up, but he also gained some incredible powers. He could talk to the nanites and control technology with his mind. After Rex's successful transformation, the Consortium saw the potential of the Nanite Project in a whole new light. One of their members, Black Knight, underwent the same procedure and gained similar incredible powers, but more on her later. The scientists soon realized that the Nanites had the power to manipulate the very fabric of reality itself. But there was a catch. They needed a master control Nanite to program and regulate all the others. And thus, the five Meta Nanites were created. These special nanites contained fragments of a secret code called the Dominion Code, or God Code. Each meta-nanite was designed to control a different aspect of reality, essentially granting godlike powers to whoever controlled them. However, to prevent misuse, the Salazar family took a clever precaution. They secretly programmed the meta-nanites to only respond to the commands of Rex Salazar, ensuring that they would never fall into the wrong hands. But in the relentless pursuit of ultimate power, the Consortium decided to implant the Meta Nanites within themselves, hoping to attain godlike abilities. However, the Salazar family vowed to put an end to the Nanite project to prevent the Consortium from harnessing this immense power. 
Caesar Salazar initiated a sequence that would trigger a catastrophic explosion in the nanite reactor. As chaos erupted, most of the scientists managed to escape the facility, but Raphael and Violetta found themselves trapped inside, with Van Kleist blocking their path to the exit by breaking the hatch of the door. In the aftermath of the explosion, Raphael and Violetta tragically lost their lives, while their son, Caesar, managed to escape in his pod laboratory. His escape was a close call, and the pod traveled at near light speed, resulting in a time dilation effect that hurled him five years into the future. Van Kleis underwent a strange transformation, becoming an Evo and gaining total control over Abyssus's altered landscape. The explosion also had a profound impact on Rex, wiping his memories and leaving him wandering the world aimlessly, unsure of his true identity or purpose. Amidst the chaos, two scientists, Peter Meacham and Gabriel Rylander, miraculously survived. Rylander, fearing the misuse of the powerful Omega-1 nanite, sought refuge in South America to keep it safe from those who aimed to exploit its potential. The nanite reactor's destruction scattered billions of nanites, including the meta-nanites, worldwide. Incomplete nanite programming caused random activation in all living beings, resulting in dangerous mutation and the creation of EVOs. The world faced an EVO crisis, desperately needing someone to control the situation and find a way to stabilize the nanites. After the nanite event, the consortium withdrew its financial support for the nanite project and instead redirected the resources to fund Providence, a global police organization tasked with containing and managing the EVO outbreak caused by the unleashed nanites. Providence's mission was to maintain control and prevent EVOs from causing further chaos across the world. So, Rex finds himself in Hong Kong and becomes friends with Tuck, Squid, and Cricket. Together, they work on surviving in a city full of EVOs. But things take a wild turn when Rex gets caught up in an EVO crime ring led by none other than Quarry. And here's the real kicker. Rex actually sells out his buddies to Quarry just to secure his own freedom. Talk about a major betrayal. Poor Tuck, Squid, and Cricket end up getting stuck in a life of crime for years, all thanks to Rex's decision. Fast forward a few years, Rex morphs into a massive biomechanical creature and goes on a chaotic rampage in Mexico, prompting Providence, the global police force, to intervene. Agent Six and White Knight are dispatched to contain the situation. But when Rex reverts to his human form after crashing, he loses all recollection of the events. Beneath the wreckage, Six discovers the young boy and, despite initial doubts, decides to help him as Rex grapples with amnesia. Rex's remarkable curing powers are revealed when he saves Six from an Evo, leading them to bring him to Providence for further investigation. While they're hopeful about the discovery, Six doesn't trust the head honchos of research and development, Dr. Fell and White Knight. His suspicions are confirmed when White goes all villainous, kidnapping and caging Dr. Holiday to get to the bottom of why Rex is at Providence. White Knight and Dr. Fell try to dissect Rex to figure out his cure-giving secrets, but his nanites react in defense, causing chaos. White ends up getting trapped and zapped by the nanites, and Fell gets fired, with Dr. Holiday taking his place. Providence recognizes Rex's extraordinary powers and brings him on board to join their team. Living in Providence, Rex found a true sense of belonging and formed deep connections with the people there, especially Agent Six, Dr. Holiday, and Bobo. They become his family, and he cherished the bond they shared. Rex now, an active member of Providence, goes on all sorts of missions while curing Evos whenever possible. And that's everything you needed to know before we delve into the show. So now let's move on to the first episode of the show. After a series of events, Rex finally decided to reveal himself to the public during a major city battle. But he was fed up with how Providence treated him, so he hightailed it out of there with his loyal buddy, Bobo. While on the run, he bumped into a teenager named Noah Nixon, and the two became good friends. Unfortunately, things took a wild turn when a group called The Pack nabbed Rex and dragged him into Abyssus. And guess who was there? The big bad leader of The Pack, Van Kleiss himself. Van Kleis tried to drain Rex's nanites, but luckily Rex managed to escape and evade their clutches with the help of his friends. After dealing with some zombies and saving Meacham's daughter, Zara, Rex needed a serious breather, so he took off to Cabo Luna with Noah and Bobo for some much-needed downtime. 
And wouldn't you know it, he developed a little crush on a girl named Cersei. He went on a mission to find her and discovered that she was actually an Evo working for the pack. Being the good guy that he is, Rex lent a hand and helped take down the Evo. Rex then tried to convince Cersei not to join the pack, but she was determined to go through with it, which left poor Rex feeling heartbroken. Rex's disappointment hit new heights when he discovered that Noah was actually hired to spy on him. I mean, who wouldn't feel betrayed in a situation like that? It was the first time Rex had made a real human friend, and now this bombshell. But life has a funny way of throwing curveballs, because when Noah's life was on the line, Rex couldn't help but jump to the rescue. And you know what? That's when he realized just how much Noah meant to him. Rex still runs away in frustration, but don't worry, he'll come around. As Rex continues his journey, he stumbled upon a village bustling with engineers hard at work on a transmission tower. Little did he know that the architect behind the tower was none other than Zag RS, a creation meant to eliminate all nanites that escaped from Abyssus. Zag RS had a sinister plan to use the tower to wipe out nanites globally, which would have also resulted in the destruction of any Evos that could otherwise be cured. But our hero, Rex, couldn't let that happen. He sprang into action and thwarted the plan, destroying the tower before it could cause any harm. Once again, Rex saves the day. After a while, Rex made his way back to Providence, only to find that Van Kleis had also resurfaced and was causing trouble. As expected, Rex was suspicious of Van Kleis' intentions, and those suspicions were soon proven right. Van Kleis held the United Nations' envoy hostage and demanded that the world submit to his will. But Rex wasn't about to let that happen. Taking matters into his own hands, he confronted Van Kleis and sent him packing back to Abyssus where he belonged. So, at some point, Rex got caught off guard by this kinda crazy lady named Breach. She had some serious obsession issues and ended up trapping Rex in some mysterious place. Providence tried to get her to spill the beans on where Rex was, but she was completely tight-lipped. Turns out, she had this thing for collecting shiny objects and saw people as just objects too. Pretty messed up, right? Anyway, Breach had this whole pocket dimension set up where she stored all her precious stuff, including this town called Greenville that straight up vanished like two years ago. Things got even crazier when Rex got into a fight with this Evo girl and parts of the town got wrecked. And let me tell you, it really ticked Breach off. She started sending her stuff all over the world in a fit of rage. But then, Rex had this realization. He figured out that destroying more of the town actually upset Breach even more. So he went all out and wrecked it even more. This caused Breach to completely lose it and open a portal to Providence, which Rex used to escape. Unfortunately, the whole dimension ended up collapsing, leaving Breach heartbroken. She had a total mental breakdown and vanished into this crazy imploding portal. After that crazy incident with Breach, Rex and his team are on a mission to find the scientist, Gabriel Rylander. They track him down and get some major revelations about Rex's past, his parents, and how he got his awesome powers. But just when Rex thinks he's getting more answers, Van Kleist crashes the party and things get intense. They have this epic showdown, and Van Kleist reveals this crazy tentacle arm thing, Super weird, right? Then, Rylander makes a bold move and attacks Van Kleis, and they both disappear in some kind of vaporizing incident. Rex manages to escape thanks to Agent 6, but it's a total disaster as the whole place blows up like fireworks. It's pretty sad because Rylander died just before revealing everything, but Rex tries to stay positive because he learned something mind-blowing. He has a brother. Now, the pack finds out about their leader's demise, and Abyssus starts crumbling like crazy. Cersei seizes the chance to play on Rex's emotions and asks for his help in restoring stability. But here's the twist. Rex soon realizes that Cersei and the pack are actually plotting to revive Van Kleis. He tries to fix Abyssus solo, but it's a major failure, and now Six, Holiday, and Cersei's lives are on the line. With no other choice, Rex decides to bring back Van Kleis because he's the only one who can sort this mess out. To everyone's surprise, the revival process changes Van Kleis's nanites and he becomes curable. He cures Van Kleis's nanites and turns him into a human. But that doesn't mean Van Kleis is done causing trouble. Before he can be captured, Reach appears and takes him away in the portal. Rex gives it one more shot and tries to convince Cersei to join Providence, 
but she's got major loyalty to the pack and won't budge. Later on, things take a wild turn when Vanclice launches an attack on Rex, draining him of all his nanites. Dr. Holiday comes to the rescue and discovers the meta nanite hiding inside Rex. She figures out that a high concentration of nanites could activate it. So, Rex suits up in a Providence uniform and gets Bobo to fly him to the Purgatory base for a refill. Once there, Rex not only regains his old powers, but also gains some cool new builds. One of his fresh gadgets, the Blastcaster, comes in handy as he takes on Van Kleis and his fancy new power to create Evos. They have an epic showdown, but in the end, Rex comes out on top. Van Kleis has to make a run for it with the help of Breach. Rex isn't too bothered, though. He knows Van Kleis might be back and stronger than ever, but he's not backing down either. The Evo War is far from over, and Rex is more ready than ever to take it on. With Providence under construction since the ambush, Rex seeks refuge at Noah's home. He's assigned a mission to help transport a power core. Unfortunately, Van Kleis becomes involved and turns Noah into an Evo. Given a certain time limit, Rex works his magic and cures Noah just in time, reversing the Evo transformation and saving the day. In the midst of another mission to repair the Bug Jar's shield, Rex and his trusty companion, Bobo, stumble upon the pack's sinister plan to form an alliance with No Face. Rex intervenes in the settlement, only to get captured and used as a bargaining chip to gain No Face's support. No Face actually wants Rex dead, but Van Kleis has other plans for him. He offers Rex a chance to escape and finds an unexpected ally in Cersei, who decides to help him thwart the pack's scheme. Biowolf secretly offers assistance in keeping No Face trapped, and Rex quickly gets to work repairing the shield. He manages to escape with Boba and Cersei, and they help Cersei go into hiding. One day, Rex's body starts making strange appliances appear out of nowhere. At first, he doesn't know what's happening, but he decides to figure it out. He builds a machine, but it turns rogue and attacks him, trapping him in a bubble. But don't worry, a mysterious stranger shows up and saves him. Surprise, it's Rex's older brother, Caesar. Caesar tells Rex everything about the Nanite Project and Van Kleis, and they decide to work with Providence to solve the mystery. It's a wild family reunion with lots of adventure. After that, Caesar tries to help Rex remember his lost memories using a machine, but it goes wrong. Agent Six stops in to stop the machine, but accidentally loses his own memories of the past six years. He becomes a threat to Rex, but Rex believes in him and convinces him to try the machine to get his memories back. The machine malfunctions again, putting Six in danger, but Rex destroys it just in time. Even though Six still doesn't remember the past six years, Dr. Holiday, Rex, and Bobo tell him everything that happened, helping him catch up on what he missed. In the Season 2 finale, Breach makes a comeback with her new Time Portal powers, posing a big threat to the whole world. Rex steps up to bring her in, and surprisingly becomes sort of friends with her. But Van Kleis is not going to let her escape easily, so he tries to stop them. Rex helps Breach activate her special harness, and she opens a portal to send Van Kleis away. However, things get crazy, and Breach's powers go wild, making it seem like the two are about to be evaporated. She hugs Rex, appreciating their friendship, and they both vanish through a portal. Surprisingly, Rex wakes up alone in a desert and calls Providence for help. But when he returns, he's shocked to find out that he's been gone for six months. All his friends have left Providence, and Black Knight is now in charge. Caesar, now part of the new Providence, shares that after they gave up on finding Rex, Dr. Holiday and Six decided to search for him on their own. Sadly, White Knight sacrificed himself in a kamikaze attack on Providence after being forced to step down. Now, the new Providence is using brainwashing on Evos to control them, but Rex strongly opposes this approach. He destroys the brainwashing equipment and escapes from Providence. To his surprise, he reunites with Agent Six, Dr. Holiday, Bobo, and the still-alive White Knight, who have all formed the Providence Defect Group to counteract both the new Providence and the Evos. Now, the corrupt Providence has started the second Nanite Project with the help of Caesar, with the goal of finding the five Meta Nanites. Rex also learns that his brother was responsible for the Nanite event, and now blames him for killing their parents. Anyways, the goal is clear for our team, which is to obtain all the Meta Nanites and keep them safe. 
However, they fail to do so, and the Providence gets their hand on four out of the five Meta Nanites. Somewhere in between, Cersei and Rex get along and share a kiss, so that happens too. Things get so crazy that even Ben Tennyson makes an appearance and works together with Rex to send Alpha back to Null Void. However, in the end, Rex is abducted by Providence and Van Kleiss, who aim to extract the final Meta Nanite from his body. But teaming up with Van Kleiss backfires as he aims to steal all the power for himself. However, as Van Kleiss begins the process, the reactor malfunctions, resulting in a catastrophic failure that severely damages his biomechanical arm. Rex is barely rescued, and the gang now has to carefully calculate every step as the situation is extremely dire. Or we can throw everything out of the window and go with Rex's plan of facing the issue head on. Jokes aside though, he does have a plan. Remember how he turned into his full Evo form back when Six first found him? Well, he wants to do that again, but naturally the gang is worried. However, Caesar claims Rex is the only one capable of harnessing this power. Rex successfully transforms and now has abilities that know no bounds. He uses his newfound abilities to unleash a wave that cures every single Evo all across the world. In the end, Rex comes to understand that his brother Caesar had no other option but to cause the Nanite event, so he forgives him and shares a heartfelt hug with him. Cersei also joins in, warmly embracing Rex and reminding him that he's essentially put himself out of a job by curing the world of the Evos. They all come to realize the importance of their journey and the bonds they've formed along the way. In the final scene of the show, we see Rex, Six, and Bobo all geared up and ready for some action. They spot a villain causing trouble with a massive robot, and Rex decides to take matters into his own hands. He jumps off the ship, activates his smack hands, and gets set to rumble with the gigantic foe. The show ends here, but Rex's days of being a hero are far from over. So that was the Generator Rex timeline for you guys. If you enjoyed the video, then leave us a like and subscribe to our channel for similar content. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you at the next one.